Hi, Ramel, it's Mrs. Domek. I just want to let you know how pleased I am with all the work that you're doing. I was going to go over this page with you a little bit, uh, just to go over a couple that you missed so that you understand it. So number one and two are correct. Number three and four are correct. Uh, let's look at number five, point E. Uh, it says uh, three, negative three. Okay, so let's see where you put point E. Um, okay, they're not labeled. All right, let me show you how to plot points first, okay? So, all right, we'll stay on E for a minute. Okay, so remember, we always start at zero, okay? And then we count over when it's positive, one, two, three, and then we go down for negative one, two, three, and this is point E. Okay, normally when we always want to put um, the letter there that the point is so that we can go back and refer to it. So A, you got the quadrant correct, but if we were supposed to, and you plotted the point, you just didn't label it. So let's look at A. So we're going to go one, two, three, and then down one, two, and when then we plot the point, then we have to label it A. And sometimes, and I don't know if Mr. Gregory has you do this, but sometimes you even put in the points by going like this and putting three, negative three. All right, for now, I'm just gonna label it the letter, but that's another way that you would include all that. That's plotting and labeling a point. So B, is we start at zero, we go one, two, three, four, and then down four, one, two, three, four. All right, I'm gonna change the color just so we don't get mixed up. So this was, what are we on B? Okay, so we're gonna come down four to negative four, and then this is B. Okay, so C is two, three. We go back to zero and we count over one, two, and then up three. Okay, so this is C. So we've got A, B, C. Now let's find D. D is negative two, four. So we always start at zero. We go one, two, and then up four, one, two, three, four, okay? And there's D, all right? And then we did E and F is, it says four and then zero, all right? All right, so let's take a look at the quadrants. You got one through four correct, so A is, a, and remember, here are your quadrants. I'll put them up on top instead of in them so you, I don't run into your points. Here's two. These are Roman numerals. And then this is three. And the way we get Roman numeral four is five is V. And if we take one away, so this is four. And six is V and a one on the other side. But we can use regular numbers too. But I'm just showing you, you will often see quadrants like this, one, two, three, and four. So you had quadrant three for number one, and that's right, A. Uh, B is in quadrant four, you had that one. Uh, C is in quadrant one. And then, D is in quadrant two, okay? And number, letter E is in quadrant, um, where is E, four, that's right. Is that what you had here? Check, let me check your picture here real quick. Hmm. Where is your picture?
All right, let's see. Okay. So quadrant E, you had in, I mean, letter E, you had in quadrant two. Okay. So letter E is over here. Letter E's coordinates are positive three, negative three. I think you just got mixed up and you did negative three and then positive. Okay. So take a look at that. It is in quadrant four. All right, now on F, it, the points are four, zero. So on F, we're going to go one, two, three, four, zero. This is F. And now list, listen here, the, uh, watch this. The F is not in a quadrant. It's on an axis. So it says here, name the quadrant or the axis. F, you can see, is right on the axis. So we're going to put X axis. It's not in a quadrant. It's on the X axis. Okay? All right. So I hope that is clearer for you now. All right, so now we're going to go on number seven. It says, if point E above is reflected across the x-axis, what would be the coordinates of the reflection? Okay, if you look at point E, three, negative three, and if we were to reflect it over the x-axis, that's this one, that means we're going to go over this way, okay? Um, so we went over one, two, three. So we're going to go over three again. Only instead of going down three, we're going to go up three. One, two, three. And I'm going to change the color back. Okay, so three and then um, negative or positive three this time because we're doing the reflection. One, two, three. So this point here is the, it reflected over E. So it would be like if you folded this piece of paper on E, then this point would match up with that point. Okay, that's called a reflection over the x-axis. It says reflected across the x-axis. So the points would be three, positive three. Okay. All right, let's look at number eight. Imagine that one of the points given in problems one to six has been reflected. The reflection is in quadrant two. What are the possible coordinates of the reflected point? Okay, so if we're reflecting over the y-axis, um, we're going to fold it this way and go across this way. So the only point there is C. We're not going to uh, use the reflection of E. So C says 2, 3. And if we reflect it over the y-axis, we're going over here 2 and up 3. I'm going to change my color again. So you can see what I'm doing there. So this is over this way two and up three. But now we're gonna go this way and up three. And you can see that it lands in the quadrant two. If you folded this, these two points would match if you folded the paper on the Y. All right, so it said, Imagine that one of the points given in problems one to six has been reflected. The reflection is in quadrant two. Okay, so that's one of them that it could have been. It could have been, um, um, so the, the reflected point is negative two, three. So, all right, you go ahead and write it on, on number eight. If I, um, move my paper down, I'll lose all this, and I want to use this to explain it. So number eight, one of the possible points, it says, what are the possible coordinates of the reflected point? All right, this is the reflected point of C. So the coordinates are negative two, 
three, um, three, positive three. So that's one of the choices right there. We reflected C over the Y axis. Now it says, what's another one? Now we could go down here to A and reflect it over the X axis. And that would be another point. So let's see what it would be. We went over negative three, and then we went down two. So now we're going to go over negative three and up two. Okay, let me find a different color. So we're going to go over negative three and up two. And this is the reflection of A. So that's the other point would be negative three, two. So negative three, two. All right, so let me make sure we answered everything on that. So um, it asked us to, what are the possible coordinates of the reflected point? Okay, we got that. All right, so either one of those could have been reflected over and landed in quadrant two. All right, good. Now, number nine. Bradley says that if point B is reflected across the x or across the y axis and its reflection is then reflected across the x axis, the point is will be D. Is Bradley correct? Okay. So um, I'm going to go ahead and erase this so that I can show you what we do with Bradley's. Um, stay on this for as long as you need to, um, to um, get all those points and understand what we talked about here. Um, and then um, I'm going to move the paper up. But when I do, I lose all my marks. All right, let's do number nine. All right, so number nine says, Bradley says that a point B is reflected across the y-axis. All right, so point B is four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Okay, so this is point B. And he says that if we reflect it over the x-axis, no, I'm sorry, y-axis, sorry. So um, that would be then we'd go this way. So this B is 4, negative 4. Okay. And if we reflect it over the Y axis, we're like folding the paper on the Y, and where will this point match up over here? So the way we do that is we go to the left four, okay? One, two, three, four. And then we go down four. One, two, three, four. So here's the reflection for B. If we, that would match up. If we folded that paper, it would match up. And those points are negative four, negative four. Okay, but we're not done. Let's read on. It says, okay, we just now reflected it over the Y. And then if we take that point, the reflection point, and reflect it across X, will, the, will we end up at point D? All right, well, let's first put in D so that we can see. So D D is negative 2, 4, 1, 2. One, two, three, four. All right, this is D. Okay? All right. So that's where Bradley thinks we're going to land when we reflect this point over to this point. So let's see. We're going to go across to negative four, but this time we're going to go up four. And we land at here. So did we land on point D? No, we didn't. 
So Bradley is incorrect. He is not correct. Okay, so Bradley is not correct. Hello? Are you out for lunch this man? No, can you hold one second while I finish this video? Can I call you right back? Yeah, okay. Bye. Okay, bye. Okay, not correct. Okay. We did not land on point D. All right, let me see what else. If it asked something, uh, I lost it. Where did it go? All right, let me see um, if it asks us to anything else. What page was that? 20 something. Okay, here we go. 22. All right, so let's see. Okay, that's just what it asks. Um, Bradley says that a point B is reflected across Y and its reflection is then reflected across the X. The result is D. He is not correct. And you just can um, explain that by saying that when we went across here, negative four, to, and then up four, we landed on, what points did we land on? Negative four, positive four. Okay, so that is not where D is. Negative four, positive four. All right. All right, Ramel, um, you see if that helps. And then if you're still not sure, have mom dojo me and I will do what I can to help you. All right. See you later.